Um, most of the issues that are on the table about Section 702 actually, believe it or not, don't relate to transparency. There are some transparency uh, questions about uh, whether or not the intelligence community can provide more, uh, more statistics about the uh, activities that are conducted under Section 702. For example, there has been a big controversy over whether or not the intelligence community should be providing an estimate of the number of Americans who are swept up in Section 702 surveillance. And uh, it's been years that this conversation has been dragging on. And so Congress may actually want to step in and, and put its thumb on the scale there. Um, and there are other uh, reporting issues as well, uh, transparency that could uh, enhance public trust, but also facilitate accountability when it comes to Section 702 surveillance. Um, but I think some of the main issues around Section 702, which of course is the authority that allows the government to target foreigners overseas for surveillance without getting a warrant, even if they're communicating with Americans and even if their communications are stored inside the United States. Um, you know, this is an authority that's been uh, used apparently very effectively um, as a counterterrorism tool um, to monitor suspected terrorists overseas and, and to disrupt their plots. And I think there's actually no serious effort afoot to disturb the core functionality of Section 702, which is again to uh, be able to conduct warrantless surveillance of, of known or suspected uh, foreign threats. Uh, but there is a lot of concern, and not just among civil liberties advocates, but um, among lawmakers, about the impact of Section 702 on Americans, and more specifically, the scope of incidental surveillance of Americans' communications, and whether the uh, back-end protections for that incidentally collected information of Americans are sufficient. And I think that's where uh, you're likely to see Congress take action um, on this front end issue of, of the scope of incidental collection. Um, the permissible pool of targets under Section 702 is extremely broad. It's essentially any foreigner overseas as long as there's a foreign intelligence purpose. And foreign intelligence is itself defined quite broadly. So at least on paper, this law could allow the targeting of an ordinary private citizen overseas who's not suspected of any connection to terrorism and who has no connection with a, with a foreign power. Um, I don't know if that's how the law is actually being used. I certainly hope it isn't. Uh, but it's allowed uh, under the statute. Um, and the problem with that is not just the privacy rights of foreigners. They do have privacy rights under treaties that the United States has signed. Uh, but the impact on Americans, because the wider the pool of foreign targets, the wider the pool of Americans who will be incidentally surveilled, um, and the greater the likelihood that those will just be innocent conversations between Americans and their friends and their relatives and people they do business with overseas. So there's a question that's being asked about whether or not the scope of surveillance could be narrowed to people suspected of connections to foreign powers, people suspected of having information about security threats um, consistent with the national security benefits of the statute. And then the, the biggest issue, I'll try to be brief, is, uh, is what's referred to as backdoor searches. That's uh, the practice uh, that when agencies obtain the raw data that's collected under Section 702, uh, they, their procedures allow them to sort through that information looking for the communications of particular Americans that they're interested in. And uh, from a civil liberties perspective, that's problematic because if the government wants to read an American's emails or phone calls, they usually have to go to the court and get a warrant. Um, and in order to avoid getting a warrant under Section 702, they have to certify, the government has to certify to the FISA court that it's not interested in any particular known Americans, that its interest is in the foreign target. And yet, immediately after getting the data, they can go looking for particular known Americans after having just said, nope, we've got no designs on them. So this, I, I've said it many times, but I'll say it again, it's a bait and switch um, that is in real tension with the spirit, if not the letter, of, the, of Section 02's restrictions on targeting Americans. So I think we uh, will, are very likely to see some action on that in Congress. So